this, turning it all around for your breakthrough, for your good, because you know what? He loves us so, so much, and we're so glad that you're joining us for Hope Today, where we're going to spend a little bit of time to encourage you, to empower you through the hope of glory, Jesus Christ, and I'm so glad that we're all back together again. Tom Hollis, Amy Schaefer, here we are, and Amy, we have an incredible guest coming up in a few moments. Oh, we do. We have a special guest, Bud Hendrickson is here. He is talking about enjoying greater results with less effort. Like, yeah, I'm all in. This is going to be great practical truths that he is going to give us today. Some nuggets that we can really take, like some nuts and bolts, Tom. I will sign up for that, that course anytime. Who doesn't want better results greater, with less effort? That's right. Greater results for, for less, with less effort is a great idea. And we hope that you're having a wonderful day. And we're glad that you're part of this program. If you have a need, if you have something that's, uh, you know, uh, that you just, that's on your heart, on your mind, I want you to know we always have prayer partners standing by that are, are there to uh, just pray with you and just uh, take your request to the throne room of God. So avail yourself of that. But guys, I have a, I have a great verse. It's one we've all heard, you know, at, but it applies. It applies certainly to what we're going to be talking about today. Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. When you hear that, Sid, what, what, how's that grip your spirit? Oh, well, that is, I just love that we have a Bible. I'm so glad that God gives us the word and that he puts those reminders. He put those, those truths into our hearts and that we're able to read it because no matter what the circumstances, you know, I just recently heard, and I just even feel it's true in my own life, no matter what we're going through, those trials, those tribulations, when we're facing hardship, when we're going through the fire, when we feel like there's rain pounding on upon us, that even in the midst of it, even in the midst of your situation, whatever it may be to, if it's personally, if it's mentally, with your family, with your marriage, with your finances, whatever, it is, God is using that very thing to teach you something. So I think it's something that I know we should not, you know, a lot of times we're like, we want to run from the issues, Amy, yes. but it's so important that we gain hold of the revelation that God's just trying to speak inside of us. And we grab onto that and be like, okay, he's teaching me something new so I can pass that on to other people. Absolutely. And you know, I don't know how I could even live life without this scripture. I, I cannot tell you how many times I've taken the scripture and applied it to something that I was going through in life. You know, the past couple of days, we've actually been on a road trip. My daughter just graduated her internship and we're so happy for her. We had to bring a vehicle back and then she's taking another one down. And, and we kept getting delay after delay after delay. And you know what my husband and I said, every single delay, every thing that went wrong, we said, somehow God is going to work this out for our good. And do you know that's exactly what happened? That because something happened with this and something happened here, we were in the right meeting at the right time with the right people. And it is something that can literally shift something in our life and ministry. So I'm grateful for the scriptural. I'm grateful uh, that, that in life, it, it's not over till it's over, that God has that next thing for you. Well, and not everything's good. We realize that, but God can cause those things to work together for our good. And that's a, that's a really a faith filled walk. That's when we need our faith, when we're going through those kind of difficult times and God is able to take us from that place into uh, and understand, hey, I've got this. I've got your direction. I've got your life. I've got you where, right where I want you. And, uh, you know, we just have to trust him with those difficult times. But you know what, before we go on, I don't know, you were at a great conference yesterday, I was, weren't you? I was, and so, you know, there was a national prophetic conference that was here in Pittsburgh, and it was just an amazing time where, you know, pro prophetic leaders and prophets from across the country were coming together and contending really for revival, things to shift and happen yeah. in our nation. And I just truly believe that there is a breaking, there is a shifting, things are gonna happen, that everything we've seen, you know, one thing that they were talking about, I feel like the enemy through this you know, a, a, a demonic spiritual revival, right? With the whole pandemic and everything that's going on. But what it's done in us as us as believers in the body of Christ, and it's really like we're contending for our faith like never before, standing on the promises of God. And I just know everybody is talking about, Amy, just revival. Things are gonna be breaking out. Things are shifting. It's gonna happen in our families. It's gonna happen in our neighborhoods. Yeah. I'm excited and I'm ready. I feel like there's been this pullback, but I feel like God is like, let's go church, let's oh, yeah. go. <laughs> well, we were supposed to be at that conference, but we were, on a road trip instead, but we were getting a, a tight words for Pittsburgh and this area of revival. And I'm telling you as a pastor here, you can feel it. Things are changing, 
things are shifting. God is on the move, Tom. I, I love that. I, you know, it's one of those things where when you're in the midst of God moving, you're like, wow, I wish it was just like this all the time. God's got this. God, God when, he, when he begins to move like that in revival, it is a powerful time. You know, the journey of life is full of many choices that we must make along the way. But how do we make sure that those choices align with God's will for our lives? In his new book, Enjoy Greater Results with Less Effort, author Bud Hendrickson describes how you can live your life to the fullest by making better life choices that can help toward building a better you. Bud, welcome to Hope Today. Well, thank you. I'm very appreciative of being on your show today. Bud, we are all in with the title of this book. I don't know one living, breathing human that would not want to enjoy greater results with less effort. Where did this book come from? You know, it originally started, it, it's actually kind of an update to a book that I wrote back in 2016 uh, after my first wife passed away of terminal cancer. Uh, a good friend of mine said, you know, what are 10 life lessons that you live by? And so I'd come home and, and I uh, wrote it down after church and, you know, and I just went through them all. And I wrote a paragraph and I sent it back to him and he goes, wow, this is really good. You should write a book about this. And I kind of put it off. He says, oh, I've never really thought about writing a book. But what's interesting is good as it was to reflect back then about how I lived life, what really um, allowed me to live a good life. Uh, I even had events after that book that uh, made me rely on those 10 bedrock truths. And, you know, I've, I fell and I broke 10 ribs and a collarbone, uh, you know, falling 10 feet from my deck. And, you, you know, I could have looked at this and said, man, how dumb was I? But you know what? Really what God put on my heart was, how do you build a better you? What can you learn from this? You know, God doesn't necessarily care about our comfort, but it's about our character, right? So how do I use this situation to grow? You know, and then uh, I just look at this pandemic and, you know, all 7 billion people have been affected, right? And so where I kind of changed it is, you know, my first job was about enjoying your journey, but it's really about how do you get purposeful? How do you get priority in your life? so you can get greater results, right? We don't have necessarily a lot of extra effort, but if you can make better decisions uh, with better information, uh, not only does it build a better you when you align with God, and that's a big part of it. You know, that first step is building that relationship with God. Uh, once you have that good relationship with God, you gotta build one with yourself because you can't give to others what you don't have, right? And then you start building into others. And so what I really think is powerful is when you're purposeful and prioritized with God's will, you get greater results without, with less effort. And in the process, you build a better you. And I really felt that better reflected what the 10 bedrock truths are all about. I love the idea that these are bedrock truths. It's, it's like some substance that you can hang on to. What do we do when life doesn't go as planned and we have to make changes? Well, I think one of the important things, and one is I think the relationship with God, right? Because I think that if you really go back to Romans 8, 28, is we need to use our free will to find out what is the good in this, right? How is God going to use this for good? But it requires us, I think, to use our free will to find it. And an example I will use, when my first wife was diagnosed with terminal cancer, I'm unemployed, right? I'm paying $1,700 in COBRA insurance. Um, it was a pretty challenging time, I would say. Um, and I just wasn't finding work, you know, there in California. And finally, I ended up taking a job to, that brought me up to the Pacific Northwest. Well, we built our forever home in 2004. Uh, we had a church that we, you know, lived life and grew in for 20 years. We experienced life with all the people there, our friends. And you could say, wow, that's not a good thing to move away. But what was nice is that my wife had purpose now. She had all these new things to go explore that we didn't have before. We had 30 people, 
family and friends come and visit us. It gave her purpose to plan outings and events. And what I have to say too is it's different when someone comes to your house, spends the weekend, and you wake up with bedhead, and you have coffee, and you plan the day's events, and you break bread. It's different than just somebody stopping by your house. And so when you look at that, that's the good that came from that very challenging time. And I think had we just been focused in what we lost, we would have missed the blessing mm -hmm. in that. And I think that's really the message of the book is if we're purposeful, which means in alignment with God, and we're prioritized, is it's gonna change the way we live. It's gonna change how we approach things. It's gonna really bring that joy that I think God wants us to have in our life. What you're saying reminds me of one of your bedrock truths. Big windshield looking forward, small rear view mirror looking back. And after this recent road trip I just have, that is so true. We should spend more time looking through that big windshield. How can people but practically make that choice to shift the way they're seeing things, to shift the way they're looking at things? Well, and I think the important thing is, is that really our journey is in front of us, right? And, and, and I've got another bedrock truth that really blends into that. It's 90% for today. 10% for tomorrow. And, you know, when I was 20 years old, I, I lost my father. And it's one of those things that, you know, he died suddenly, you know, three weeks short of 60, you don't plan those things, right? And so what I learned early on is that you're not guaranteed tomorrow and you can't do anything about the past that's living in the now. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of going back to the windshield. That's where we're at now, right? But if you're focused in the rear view mirror looking back, Again, you can't do anything about it, okay? I do believe you need to look enough to what you can learn from, right? So that you can better navigate going forward. I think sometimes we need to reminisce and celebrate because there are things in the past, right? But if we stay focused in the back, and I call that being historical, we're gonna miss a lot along our journey. And I think that's part of the joy that we miss because we're seeing a river mirror but we can't do anything about it. Whereas if you're looking forward, uh, you get to enjoy it. You can better navigate when those challenge and, and I call them curveballs of life, right? Uh, you can better navigate when you're looking forward. And so I think it's a good analogy. And that's what I try to do is in my bedrock truths is make it visual so that you can see how it applies and how it works. You know, but so much of our life in the church and our, our life just period is built on relationships. So you have one of your other principles is that you can only be reasonable with reasonable people. <laughs> Could you just expound on that a little bit? Because I think we've all been there where we've had, I know we have, where people haven't been reason, reasonable and we don't know what to do about it. You know, so often in our world, you know, we think we can reason with everybody and, and negotiate through things. and. You know, really, I think what's important is if, it, if to me, my definition of an unreasonable person is someone who only considers their own needs, no matter what's presented or what information is shared. Well, you're not going to resolve conflict. You're not going to come up with a solution that's beneficial to both. Why waste your time? Right. So I think it's very important to focus your time on reasonable people because that's where you're going to see results. Right. So that flows right into great results with less effort. Don't waste your time on unreasonable people. But as Christians, we need to have a heart that's open because if those people come around and want to be reasonable, want to find common ground, you know, that are willing to listen so that we can find a win-win situation, we need to move forward in progress, right? And I think sometimes in our world today, what's emulated is we just shut people off. And I think that as Christians, we always got to have an open heart to unreasonable people, but I think sometimes we don't need to bang our head up against the wall trying to negotiate with them or, or find a win-win. We need to wait until they're open. You even tell of a story in your book where you're talking politics with somebody and it just wasn't working out, and, and that is so relevant, bud, to today. What did you do? Did you, did you fight it out with, or did you ask for forgiveness or how did you move on? 
Well, what's interesting about that, this was back in 2016, right? And that's child's play compared to what we're dealing with today with the pandemic, you know, the election and all that. But I have to say, it was about politics and religion, and they say those are two topics you shouldn't talk about. It got a little heated. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of joke, uh, I have a linebacker mentality. When I get passionate, my body language and tone changes. But what I will tell you is that night, um, and I'm not saying that, you know, the other party didn't have some responsibility, but I have to take responsibility for my action. Mm -hmm. And so uh, God convicted me with my own words that I penned, and I not only apologized, uh, but I was convicted to say, I'm going to always have my house be a safe environment in all situations. And that's more important about the safety and the relationship I have with the person in front of me than being right or whatever, getting a point across on politics or religion. And, and so it really has changed how I approach those kinds of discussions today. That's awesome. Okay, we will be right back after this break with more from Bud and I personally need help from him. I have a question about his bedrock number two. We'll be right back. Psalm 126 verse 5 says, those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. It's hard to understand how God can bring joy and dancing out of our most devastating situations. And yet the Bible shares stories of people just like you and me who found themselves in a desert season of life and yet learned how to dance in the midst of it. The Dancing in the Desert devotional Bible encourages us by taking a close look at men and women of the Bible, the pressures they faced, the doubts they had, the choices they made, and ultimately how they found joy after heartache. To receive your very own Dancing in the Desert devotional Bible, call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Request it when you give your best gift and we'll send it to you right away. When we keep our gaze fixed on a story bigger than our own, we too can learn to dance even in the driest of our deserts. We are back with Bud Hendrickson and his book that you are going to love, Enjoy Greater Results with Less Effort. And Bud, I have a question for you. This is, I need your help. I'm asking for your coaching advice. I have a problem with margins, time, not so much money, but time margins. Can you give a girl some advice, some bedrock truths? Well, you know what's funny? When you look at a page on a book, 40% uh, of the page is margin. You kind of go, why, why do they uh, use that much of the page for margin? Why don't they save money on printing by using the whole page? But it's a lot harder to read if they just went clear out to the edge. And so, you know, that's a good analogy of the stress that comes about and by having margin makes it easier. Just look at life. When do you get the most stressed is when you're behind on time, uh, you're, you're running late, and then that's when a traffic lights don't work in your favor or there's a train crossing. Uh, money, right? You're, you're, you're living paycheck to paycheck, and you got an unexpected bill. And I, I've learned a lot that a lot of joy in your life is stolen when you don't have margin in time and money. And so again, that's part about being purposeful, about being prioritized. What's important to you? Uh, what should you be investing in today? Uh, you know, if you were to look down at the end of your life and, and write a eulogy, because that's what you want to be known for, what's important, what you're doing is it, it consistent with what is important to you. And part of it too is I think being content. Um, you know, we the more that we're content, we're not striving to get more, compete with the Joneses. And so we're satisfied with what we have. And I, I can tell you, um, and I didn't do it consciously, but between making life choices with finances to have more margin and, and with you know being margin in time, I have improved immensely the, the joy, uh, the less stress, but it also gives me the resiliency so when those curveballs do get thrown your way, that 
you're in a better position to weather the storm. It's kind of like your immune system, right? You want it to be healthy so when that bug or virus comes. But I think when it comes to our life, we need to have our foundation healthy for resiliency. And I think it starts with uh, uh, having that margin of time and money. Well, I, but I really love that. I love the, the thought of that, that margin gives us that resiliency, but you needed resiliency. In fact, your, your bedrock truth number 10 is our verse today, that all things work together for the good of them who love God. How did you apply that? What, you know, it sounds good, doesn't it? We all have it, people have it on their refrigerator and we, we quote it. But you know, you went through the most difficult thing a person can go through, the death of your, of your dear wife. How did you find that strength to say, I'm, I'm going to live this verse out in my life? Well, when I look at my bedrock truths, they're kind of a, in thirds. I've got a third of them that kind of got their start early in my life. Uh, another third early professional life. And then some of them is you have kids and live life. But I can tell you bedrock truth number 10 kind of got started in 2013 when my first wife was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And, uh, and, and I know a lot of people, are, their, their intentions are good, but when someone tells you, well, God has a perfect plan, that's not very comforting when you have a loved one with terminal illness, right? You don't know how long they're gonna live, but you know they're going to die. And so we had to go searching. I mean, this was not something that just came naturally. We had to go searching ourselves. And when we came across Romans 8, 28, boom, a light went on and said, you know, it is really about how can we find good in this, right? Cancer is not the road we wanted to be on, but how can we find the good that's on this road that we're on? And so when I look back, is it really forced us to prioritize what we did. She did not have the energy to do everything. So we had to prioritize what's important in our life and what we're gonna do and uh, really relied on God. And, and uh, you know, it, it literally gave us the strength and courage to move to a whole new area where you lose your support system in your church of 20 years. Um, and it also gave us the, the vision to see the good that came about this. And, and, and I'll tell you another thing is, you know, uh, to the day she died, she was investing in people. And there was a palliative care doctor there and said, you know what, you have inspired us. And I think what Romans 8 28 does is when we get to those challenges, it allows us to focus on building a better us, um, building that character that God wants that we bring to heaven. And that's more important than our comfort. And that's how it kind of all came together. It was not necessarily something I had in my entire life, but when that moment came, God put it on our heart to find the words to give us strength. I love that so much, Bud. And, and I was thinking while you were talking about a picture that you have in your book, and it's, it, and it's a guy pushing a really heavy box. And that's like in our own effort. And then somebody comes along and they're helping push that heavy weight. But then there's a better way. You put the box on a cart and it comes with ease. And there's no way we can go through life through these hard, heavy things, through grief, divorce, bankruptcy, pain, struggle without the help of God. But Bud, what you're saying is, is if we'll do it God's way, we can really enjoy greater results with less effort. We thank you for your message. We thank you for your bedrock truths and we wish you the best. Thank you very much. And I appreciate the opportunity to share those because I do believe that uh, everyone can benefit from the bedrock truths and get better results through all situations in our life. So good. And we'll have this book available on our website, ctvn.org.
So good, so many truths. Yeah, he had like just that point of just him sharing about his his wife and just that situation. You know, I think a lot of us, you know, is like married, you know, there's gonna come a day when that's gonna happen or maybe you're watching right now and you're going through a really difficult situation or you're watching your loved one in a tough time. But the one thing, just seeing the tears in his eyes about how the palliative doctors, like what they were going through and just how God was undergirding his strength in them gave them hope. And isn't that amazing, Tom? Is that what sometimes God does is that we will go through these tough times. You know, Jesus carried the cross and it wasn't pretty. The, the gospel is a very dirty gospel. And a very it hard is. Gospel. I mean, it's real life. I mean, this yeah. is life has its difficult moments. It just does, you know? I was thinking of what you just shared about that picture, uh, Amy, of the man pushing the box. And I remember when I was a young man working in a warehouse that I was ready to pick up this heavy box and a guy stopped me and said, Go get that dolly and bring it over here. Right. Always use the machine because yes. it's made for that and it will help you yes. without as much effort. And that's a good lesson for us spiritually. Go to the source, go to the thing. You were created to have a relationship with God. So go to God when it's the most difficult time to go to God. Go there, get the strength you need. Let him carry that weight for you, Amy. And you know, you, you can't do this by yourself. You can't, you can't do life in your own ability. That's why God gave us the Holy Spirit. He is the one who comes alongside to help us. He's our comforter. He is our helper. He is our strengthener. So I want you to know today that you're not alone, that God is with you and that you can make it through. You can achieve greater results. You just have to let go and you have to give your life into the hands of a loving father and a loving savior. He knows exactly your next step. He knows the exact direction for you. He knows exactly where he needs you to go, who he needs you to be with, the door that's going to open. And if you'll just tune in for just a minute, you're gonna hear the voice of God. Mm, yeah, and just even right now, I just hear God saying, you know, I heard this Maverick City song that it just talks about it's okay to not be okay. And love makes room for me to cry. Love makes room for me. Whatever you're going through, just know his love makes complete room for you today. And whatever you need, just get into his presence. Maybe it's on your knees. Maybe you're just in your bed crying out, whatever it is. But I'm telling you, friend, when you begin to worship him, when you begin to say, God, you're good, even in the midst of this, even though I'm being afflicted or whatever I'm going through, I'm telling you from personal experience that God will work all things together for your good. Because you know why? You're going to share that testimony with other people. You're going to give them hope. Well, we thank you so much for all of you that partner with us at Cornerstone to make hope today possible. Possible. Without you, we couldn't bring hope to the airways and we're so grateful for you. Have a great day. On tomorrow's Hope Today, miracles happen. Anointed healing evangelist Joan Hunter delivers a message of hope, deliverance and healing that is sure to strengthen your faith. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.